This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone. In this session, I am going to show you ESP versus point to point integration. In that, I will discuss what is point to point integration, what is ESB and ESB features, difference between point to point and ESP. Before starting with this, I would like to tell you as we are as we know the mule is calling as mule esb tool why it has called as esb it is very important to know why the mule tool is has been calling as esb so there are few questions in interviews people will ask what is esb why we need esb what are the uh, differences between esb integration and point to point integration when to go for ESP and when to go for point to point integration. That is the reason I am making a session on this. It is very important because it makes sense to know why a mule is calling as ESP. So I have proofs. I can show you that why it has been called as ES mule ESP2. Let's get started. So going to the point to point integration, as discussed in our yesterday session, that is session one. In earlier days, when uh, people started doing the integrations using SOAP services, they have done point to point integrations. Later, some point of time, they realized that this has some disadvantages, so that ESP has invented. Let's see what is point to point integration and what are the disadvantages we have with this. Assume I would like to make integration between diagnostic center and a hospital. So I can make the point to point integration when there are only two systems can be integrated. That makes sense. But assume, whereas I would like to make the integration from diagnostic center to multiple hospitals around two, uh, two to three or three to five hospitals. Then if I do point to point integration, that really doesn't make sense. Because if I am doing the point to point integration between diagnostic center and hospital, what are the disadvantages we are going to have? Let's see now. Assume I have system A, system B, system C, the system D. Just treat the system A as one of the diagnostic center and system B is diagnostic center B. So diagnostic center A and diagnostic center B decided that why can't we have integration between us so that we can have a huge amount of patient information so they made one integration and later point of time one of the hospital called c has reached out to the diagnostic center a saying that hey can you provide me a uh, patient information so that i can provide this amount for you yes they made one integration in similar way later point of time system c has reached out to the system d and i have uh, this category patient information and i need another category patient information or i provide these services you provide these services we can communicate internally whenever a patient comes based on the dcs we can interchange ourselves so they made one integration between them in similar way system d has done integration with system a system b system c so if you see here all the systems have been communicating point to point System A is making integration to system B, system C, system D. In similar way, system B is making integration to the remaining systems. So this is called as point to point integration. Then you can feel this looks good and makes sense. What are the disadvantages we have? Let's discuss now. If you see a system A is having point to point integration with system B, then system C or system D. The first disadvantage is if you see here, the number of systems are four and the number of connections made to well that means 12 services has developed assume in the future a system yet due to some reason they would like to deploy all their services into another server what will happen of course the url will be changed once system a changes the url then system c developer should take care of that and system b developer should take care of that and system d developer should take care of that that means change in one system in point to point integration enforcing other system to do the similar changes to consume that particular service. That doesn't make sense. This is one of the a major disadvantage with the point to point integration. How we can avoid this using ESB we will discuss. 
before going to the ESB, I would like to show you one more disadvantage with the point-to-point -point integration. Assume in the future, a one more system has introduced, one more hospital came and asking each and every system, hey, can we make the integration? I need patient's information. Yes, of course, we can. Then what system A, system B, system C, system B developer has to do? They have to, they have to make the integration with the system E. That means again, the number of connections will be uh, increased proportionally. That means if one system has introduced, the number of integrations increasing proportionally. Now it is uh, n equal to four and 12, then next will become 16 integrations. That doesn't make sense. So to avoid these two disadvantages, not only two disadvantages we can say if each and every developer is going to put efforts to apply the changes in their system that again are time and cost effective so to avoid all these uh, challenges people realized then invented a integration pattern called esb so whenever a tool is going to be called as esb tool that should provide specific features we will discuss about that uh, what is ESB integration and ESB features. Coming to the ESB integration, so in previous slide, I took simply system J, system B, system C, system D, but here I took some uh, real time systems like ERP, CRM, some other sources, some database, some partner systems, e commerce application, a data warehouse application. So if we go for ESB, what will happen? between all the integrations we are developers esb developers we will solve the disadvantages by the point to point integration how that can be doable assume i am the developer and i am developing the esb services in the middle between the integrated system what i can do i can consume the erp system i can consume the crm system nothing but i can get the data from erp system I can get the data from CR, CRM system and other sources. That means intermediately I am developing two services and the same service can be exposed to the data warehouse, e-commerce and partner systems. As you now, how this has reduced the problem one. What the problem one we discussed, the change in ERP system is affecting the three systems. Now what will happen if the change happened in the ERP system that that change can be applied or taken care in the esb services that means we are not changing any endpoint towards data warehouse a web store e-commerce or partner applications because here in the middle we are sitting and we are consuming the erp service then we are exposing that service to the data warehouse that means we need not to do change in three system we can do simply in the esb that's it. So that the three systems can be easily access the service as it is. This way we can eliminate the first disadvantage. Assume the second disadvantage. What I told, if a new system got introduced, assume uh, one more system has introduced here. How many integrations it has to make? It has to make only one integration to ESP. ESP is responsible. Already it has been integrated into the other systems. Then that can simply provide the required services towards the new system that means the number of integrations increasing parallelly so these are the differences between point to point and esb integration but when a tool called as esb tool for suppose you are innovative in the future you are uh, you are you know uh, innovating one of the integration tool and you would like to supply that as a esb feature because the esb integration pattern is demanding in the market so of course you will go for the esb tool then how your tool will be called as esb esb has uh, given esb has provided some specifications your tool should provide should follow those specifications then only your tool will call as esb tool what are those features so if you are developing an esb tool that should allow orchestrate a service what is orchestration? For suppose you are using bricks to build a building. In similar way, we use the connectors in Mule ESB to orchestrate the services. 
it won't be a pure programming language we can't write uh, each and every line of the program line by line here we will have the connectors with respect to the each and every integration then we will use make use of those connectors we all need to know how to configure that that is completely ui part you will have the text fields to configure all those so mulesoft Mule is providing uh, this feature to orchestrate a service through mule esp2 that is the reason uh, it has called as esp2 and the second one is esp should provide a way to do the transformations what is this for suppose i am making integration between two to three systems now i have xml object and the target system was expecting the object as json then we are here responsible to do the transformation from xml to json using the uh, transform message given by the mule soft in the mule esp tool we can make use of transform message and we can do the needed transformation that means mule ES mule soft has provided data view language through transform message to transform one type of object to other type of object which are expected by the targeted system <coughs> excuse me in similar way the one more feature is ESP should provide a way to do the enrichments. What are enrichments? Because never we send the data as it is. However, we have in the database or our system directly in the same of to the target system. As I told you, we can do the transformations in a similar way. We can do the enrichments. What are the enrichments? For suppose in my database in my system, I have a name as first name last name. Then target system was expecting full name. They don't want first name last name separately. Then here we are responsible to do concat the first name and last name and send it as full name. So this way we do the enrichments. Again, MuleSoft provided the same feature under transform message component in that we have a data view language. Uh, don't bother about these orchestrating a service, uh, doing transformations, doing enrichments. Uh, we are going to do that uh, every day from our eighth session. I can say uh, from tenth session in each and every a session we will make use of transform message we will work with me and we will work with data view so these are about esb phs uh, so it is important to know uh, why uh, we are calling a mule tool as an esb tool as i discussed in the beginning of the session uh, that's all about point to point versus esb in uh, next session i am going to uh, show you what are the differences between a monolithic application and microservices in that i discuss what is monolithic application and what the what are microservices what are the differences between those that's all for today thank you